In 2015, something remarkable happened in space exploration. For decades, the best image we had of Pluto was just a blurry pixel. Even Hubble could only manage a vague, color-spotted blob. But then everything changed. After a journey of nearly a decade, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft finally reached Pluto, and what it sent back was unlike anything we'd ever seen. This mission gave us our very first detailed look at Pluto and its mysterious moons. But the story didn't stop there. New Horizons kept going, traveling deeper into the Kuiper Belt toward another strange world we'd never even seen before its launch. So what exactly did New Horizons discover at Pluto, and what did it find after? Let's dive into the highlights. Pluto might not be a planet anymore by official definition, but it's still fascinating. It's a tiny world, even smaller than our moon, and it lives in a far off region of icy objects beyond Neptune known as the Kuiper Belt. It was actually the last of the classic nine planets to be explored. Why? Because most people didn't think it was worth the trip, but the New Horizons team disagreed, and thankfully they pushed hard to make the mission happen. Launched in 2006, New Horizons became the fastest spacecraft ever launched at the time. It sped past the moon in just nine hours. For comparison, Apollo missions took over three days. It even used Jupiter for a gravity boost, shaving three whole years off its journey and giving scientists a bonus chance to test its systems with stunning photos of the gas giant and its moons. After that, the spacecraft went into hibernation, quietly drifting through space, saving energy and protecting its instruments until it reached Pluto in 2015. As New Horizons approached, it started sending back images. Day by day, the view became sharper. We watched as Pluto transformed from a blurry mystery into a world full of detail. The most surprising feature? A giant heart-shaped region that made the internet fall in love with Pluto all over again. On July 14th, 2015, New Horizons made its closest approach, just 12,500 kilometers above Pluto's surface. But we didn't get those incredible photos right away. First, the probe was too busy capturing data to send anything back. Then came the waiting. The uplink speed? Just one kilobit per second. And every signal took 4.5 hours just to reach Earth. But when the images finally came through, they were worth the wait. Towering mountain ranges, vast ice plains, flowing glaciers, even a thin, hazy atmosphere. And Pluto's biggest moon, Charon, also got a spotlight. Now here's where things get really interesting. Charon isn't just any moon, it's huge. So large, in fact, that Pluto and Charon actually orbit a point in space between them, and they're tidally locked, meaning they always show the same face to each other. That's incredibly rare, even more intriguing. Pluto and Charon look completely different. Pluto has bright and colorful patches. Charon is darker and more muted. That suggests they didn't form together, but were brought together by chance. The rest of Pluto's moons are much smaller and orbit in neat, flat circles, but it's Pluto's surface that really stole the show. The giant heart? It's called Sputnik Planitia. It's an ice plane roughly the size of Texas, but it's not made of water. It's almost entirely nitrogen ice. That's important because at Pluto's surface temperature, around minus 229 degrees Celsius, water ice is hard as rock, but nitrogen ice can flow just like glaciers on Earth. At the edges of Sputnik Planitia, we see nitrogen glaciers pouring through gaps between mountains. These glaciers are constantly moving, creating massive polygon shapes across the plains. And the lack of craters tells us this surface is young, maybe only 10 million years old. How does this work? Likely through a process called convection, where heat from below causes the ice to move in slow rolling patterns. Sputnik Planitia might even be influencing Pluto's entire climate. It may have formed after a huge impact filling with ice from below, and that ice creates a gravity anomaly, pulling things toward it. It's aligned exactly opposite Charon, which might be more than coincidence. Those mountains around the plains? They're made of solid water ice, the only type strong enough to rise several kilometers in such cold conditions. Conditions. Some may even be cryovolcanoes, volcanoes that erupt icy slush instead of lava. One likely example is Wright Mons, which stands four kilometers high and has a central depression. Another strange feature, Tartarus dorsa. It's a jagged, snake-like ridge that looks like tree bark or reptile skin. Scientists believe these could be giant penitentes, spikes formed by sublimating ice, similar to the ones found in Chile's Atacama Desert. 
Then there's Cthulhu Macula, a long, dark region stretching across Pluto's equator. It's older and heavily cratered. Some mountain peaks here are dusted with methane ice, which freezes at high altitudes. The dark color comes from tholins, complex molecules created when sunlight hits methane and nitrogen. Interestingly, some of this material may not stay on Pluto. Pluto's weak gravity means that when cryovolcanoes erupt, some material escapes entirely and ends up on Charon. That's how Charon got its red polar cap. It's literally been painted by Pluto's eruptions. Speaking of atmospheres, Pluto has one. It's extremely thin, made of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide. But what's shocking is how high it extends. Unlike Earth, where gravity pulls the atmosphere close, Pluto's atmosphere stretches far out into space. And it changes with the seasons. Pluto's year lasts 248 Earth years. And during parts of that cycle, sunlight causes surface ices to sublimate into gas. When that happens, Pluto's atmosphere can thicken dramatically, possibly reaching pressures as high as one quarter of Earth's. Some images even show what could be a frozen lake, suggesting liquid nitrogen may have once existed on the surface. But one of the most beautiful sights? Pluto's haze. New horizons revealed up to 20 distinct layers of it, glowing in soft sunlight, casting shadows across rugged terrain. These haze layers don't sit evenly around the planet. They rise and fall with the landscape, creating a surreal, otherworldly scene. In 2020, scientists proposed something wild. Pluto might have a subsurface ocean of liquid water. The idea was once considered unlikely because Pluto is so far from the sun. But cracks on its surface show signs of expansion not contraction, which suggests that the interior is still warm. If Pluto started hot, maybe from the energy of early collisions, it could have kept that ocean for billions of years. And if Pluto has one, maybe other Kuiper Belt objects do too. That brings us to Arakoth. After the Pluto flyby, New Horizons kept going, and thanks to Hubble, a new target was found, a strange object 6.5 billion kilometers from the sun. We'd never even seen it when New Horizons launched. Arakoth turned out to be something special, a contact binary. Two icy lobes fused together, possibly from a gentle collision billions of years ago. The shape had been predicted from a stellar occultation, and New Horizons confirmed it perfectly. On January 1st, 2019, New Horizons passed just 3,500 kilometers above Arakoth. The data trickled in slowly, only one kilobit per second, but the weight paid off. Arakoth was reddish, smooth, and oddly flat. Its surface had very few craters. The red color comes from, once again, tholins, organic compounds altered by cosmic rays. But here's the twist. Arakoth also shows an unexplained absorption feature in its spectra, something scientists haven't identified yet. It's a mystery we can't solve without physical samples. Because it's so far from the sun, Arakoth experiences very gentle impacts, if any. That's why its surface looks so pristine, and it may have formed slowly in a calm cloud of icy particles, eventually merging into the double-lobed shape we see now. Its density is low, and its interior is likely porous. Some bright patches might be from avalanches or trapped ices, and surprisingly, Arakoth is flatter than expected, possibly due to rotation or uneven solar heating over long stretches of time. As New Horizons flew past, it captured one final image, Arakoth's silhouette fading into the stars. We may never see it again this close. So what's next? New Horizons still has fuel and power. The team is searching for one more target, but even if they don't find one, the probe can still do something unique. It's now so far from the sun that it can observe the outer heliosphere, distant planets like Uranus and Neptune, and even search for dark matter or black holes. 